Hey, Locker Nuts. How's it going? I didn't see you there. Just working on recapping that part one and part two of the My First Pot Farmer Locker. Great stuff in this one. Very exciting. Uh, we had some great items, like such as all those pipes that we found, uh, the vaporizer, the Cheech and Chong bobbleheads. Those are super cool. And the Adidas Houston Rockets jacket. That thing was pretty sick. Um, you saw me sporting that for a few minutes. But also, we had some bus. Let's not forget about that. The GPS devices. Oh, man. 20 of them. Brand new. In the box. They're obsolete. Another bust, however, was the uh, the Xbox. Uh, red circle of death on that one. No go. Tried to sell it for parts. Couldn't sell it on eBay. But it worked out. Everything works out in time. I ripped that thing up you know, the pieces, not not literally, but I mean, I took all the cords, controllers off, and used those for a future Xbox that I found, so I could sell that system complete, everything works out, so um, anyways, let's get started without any more delay, here we go. First up, we've got that exercise bike. I listed that thing cheap because it was kind of rusty and I wanted it gone. I don't have the space for big items like this. Next up was that skateboard. It was a nice little skateboard and I actually wound up selling it to a friend of ours who saw it on Facebook and he picked it up and I actually forgot to record how much this thing sold for. I think it was 25 bucks. I might be wrong. Next, an item that sold very quickly on eBay, basically like within a day of putting it up, was this Avaya network phone. I had no way of testing it, so I threw it up there with the uh, chance that it might get returned for not working, but it looked like it was in great condition. Never heard back, so I'll assume all's good. It sold for 31 bucks. Next up was to our friend that bought the skateboard. He also wound up taking this patio heater off our hands. 30 bucks. I think we both got a good deal on that one. This is kind of a surprise, this glass chest set. I didn't know if I was going to be able to sell this for $2 at a garage sale or not at all. I wound up a little locally selling it for eight dollars I think it was a Facebook deal the only reason I mentioned this one is because I've gotten at least two more of these since then and every time I sell them very quickly for about eight bucks and eight dollars not a great amount of money but it's not bad either that little jar of pennies that I picked up wound up having three dollars and forty five cents in it yeah that's it um, that vaporizer is a beautiful little box and again, that thing sold pretty quickly. I was surprised for $65. The thing I liked most about that little box was that scorpion on the handle. That was a custom deal. They had glued it on. I just thought it gave it a really cool factor. The RCA receiver that we found, nothing special. Did not have HDMI hookups, but it didn't matter. Sold it locally for 27 bucks. The piercing jewelry, I didn't know what to do with that, so I listed it on eBay. I don't remember if it was auction or not but sold it for 20 bucks. The DVD recorder, now I've heard about these things selling well online and for good money. And sure enough, I sold this one for 50 bucks. It was a Magnavox, which I think is a decent brand. Yeah, I was happy to see that go. Pipes, man, we got some pipes. So the first step was the glass and wood pipes. I sold it as a lot, the two of them together. Sold on eBay for $125 at auction had so much success with that I threw the metal ones up right after I sold those on auction for a hundred and twenty bucks and then I had all these parts didn't know what to do with it so let's keep the auction thing going sold these for a hundred and forty five dollars there was ten over ten pounds almost eleven pounds of pipe parts there and I think they're all pretty much aluminum next up is the Cheech and Chong bobbleheads I love this item I think partially because I was such a huge fan of Cheech and Chong growing up. <laughs> I'm not saying that I followed in their lifestyle necessarily, but I definitely dug their humor. I used to listen to their audio tapes. These guys are great comedians before they were movie stars, and uh, they were brilliant, really, and probably still are, but I love these guys, and the bobbleheads were cool. Sold them for 75 bucks, pretty quick. The Enron Field hat, that was pretty cool. I mean, as far as historical piece goes, Enron is definitely an interesting, interesting story. And someone scooped that up, $24. It was in great shape. The Red Slim Cooler, this thing was pretty cool. It's, it's so, yeah, no pun intended. It was a slim cooler, which meant it's not very wide. It fits in your back seat pretty easily. 
I, I didn't sell this for a while because I was really considering keeping it, but as most things go, I decided I don't have room. 15 bucks locally. Now that Adidas Rockets jacket, I really like this. This is a high quality piece, and it had the tags on it. It was basically brand new. It took a while to sell, but I got a lot of views and a lot of watchers. It did sell for $135, which I was super stoked about. The air conditioning unit, I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I held on to that thing till it got hot. In February, it was not very warm. I think I wound up selling that like in May or June. As soon as the heat rolled in, I listed that locally, sold it for $75. It's a nice little unit. Next up is that Leonard Skinner shirt. So this thing was pretty worn. It was no longer black. It was that kind of light gray, or darkish gray. There's little holes developing along most of the stitching. This thing had been worn, but I know there's a market for it. And I listed on Etsy, which this is probably the only item I've sold all year on Etsy. And it did sell, 20 bucks. Last up is the DirecTV remote, which was branded with the Texans, the Houston Texans logo and colors. It's a pretty cool piece. I sold that on eBay for 21 bucks. So to summarize, we spent $225 on the locker, about 20 bucks in taxes, only 12 bucks at the dump, not too bad. Total cost, 257 You'll see I've outlined all the sales here, and keep in mind the sales that I put in my spreadsheets, those are after eBay and shipping fees, so those are our net numbers here. Total sales on the locker was $1,014, not too bad, with profit just over $750, with a return on investment or ROI of nearly 300%. Not too shabby. I hope you enjoyed that locker because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going through it. It was definitely an interesting one. We had some good items in there, uh, but we had some, uh, let's just say there's a lot of paraphernalia in there. And uh, to be honest, I get paraphernalia in almost every locker. Whether or not I show it on the camera, it is often there. Maybe like eight or nine times out of ten, it's there. Something about drug use and losing your storage locker go hand in hand. I don't know why. But um, not passing any judgment on anyone. All right, judgment don't pay the bills around here. So, um, but I did want to say that uh, those items produce some good profit. And it is about the bottom line around here, isn't it? Because as much as I love this job, I mean, it is exciting. And I get up in the morning just completely looking forward to going to work. I love the physicalness. I love that it knocks me out and I fall asleep so quick at night. But if I don't make money with it, then I don't keep doing it, right? So in 2019, here's the two goals I've set for myself. Number one, buy more lockers. Because the more lockers I buy, the more good stuff I'm going to find. And for two, do more flea markets. I started doing that this year, and there's some money to be made out there. Not a whole lot of money, but there is money to be made. And I think it's profit I've been missing. So I'm going to be doing those two things on a little bit more aggressive level this year and we'll see what happens you know what it's going to be more content for great videos like this as well but um i did want to mention just one thing and i'll try to be brief because this locker did have a personal side to it for for me so at the time that we were going through this locker we were also discussing something at my church and that was the concept that you know your life is on a path and on that path are decisions that you make and based on those decisions you're your life leads on could go on two different paths. That decision, sometimes a very simple decision, can go one way, which leads you in a good path, or another way, which would go on a bad path or maybe a terrible path. And it's important for us to be cognizant of these decisions when we come upon them, because we want our lives to go in the right path, right? So there's this um, this whole idea of when you know you keep your eyes on the horizon when you're on a journey, and this life is a journey. If you're looking at your feet as you're walking, how are you going to get to where you're going, where you want to go, right? You're going to get to wherever your feet lead you, and your feet are not always going to lead you to the right place. You need to keep your eyes up on the horizon as you're traveling, and life's the same way. When you're making decisions, you need to be focused on what you want for your life, and is that decision going to take you to where you want to go? This guy, for example, at one point, I think, his life was based with the decision whether he goes to school and betters himself, or if he stays home and parties with his friends. And obviously there's a lot of other choices there, even if he didn't go to school. 
Um, but he chose to stay home and party with his friends. And that party, I think, got a little bit out of hand. And maybe yeah, he put that as a priority in his life. But his girlfriend, uh, who he had you know, going through high school, there were so many photos of her. There was letters from her that he kept for decades here, okay? He kept these letters. This girl loved him, and he was obviously in love with her. Or else, why would you keep the letters? She wrote to him from college and said, Hey... I heard that so-and-so uh, told me that you passed out on his couch last night at 2.30. You lightweight, ha-ha. Well, let me tell you about my day. I got up at 5 a.m. to go to school. I have my classes at 6. And because from there, I go straight to my internship where I got to work for 8 hours. And when I get home, I basically go right to bed because I got to get up and do the whole thing over again. This is a girl who's grinding it out, right? She was working hard to better herself. And I think she was trying to have some fun and poke and jest at her boyfriend who was staying at home, passing out on someone's couch from partying all night. But um, but I can't imagine that it was all that funny for her because at some point she's out of the picture. So where his photos show like him with the family and the friends and the girlfriend especially, um, then all of a sudden you just start seeing photos of him and his friends, usually in a party atmosphere. And usually he's looking like half wasted or fully wasted in them. Um, and then the photos actually go to him with the marijuana plants in the background. And sadly, after that, there's just photos of marijuana plants. I mean, like stacks of photos of just marijuana plants. Dude loved his marijuana plants. And I think he had his priorities placed incorrectly in his life. I don't think he ended up, or at least not at one point, in a good place. Probably not where he intended to be. But, um, you know what? I don't think he made the right decisions, uh... I might be just casting judgment, I may be assuming all that would be wrong of me, but you know what, I have to gather some conclusions from going through this stuff. This is an intimate experience going through a locker sometimes. You're reading things and you're seeing photos. These are things that he didn't intend to share with the public and not some stranger like me. But I got to, uh, I got to experience it and I got to take a snapshot of this guy's life and it's sometimes it's sad. You know, sometimes it is really sad. Um, because you, as a bystander, can sometimes see the missed opportunity in someone's life that maybe they don't see as they're going along it. But um, this is a lesson for all of us, right? Keep your eyes on the horizon, you know? Be cognizant of these decisions when they face us, because we all want what's best for our lives. We want what's best for our loved ones and our families. Keep your eyes up, people, all right? Be well. Good luck, God bless you, and we'll see you next time here on the Locker Nuts channel.